Cowboy Jim. Fort McMurray, uh, McMurray, Alberta, Canada. Oh, hey, I'm dreaming. Somebody somewhere other than locally might just watch my stuff. Well, you can always stream, children. So, I have two choices. Internet, information. Oh, it's not very socially acceptable. So, because... <coughs> my Irishness requires me to have an opinion quite often about stuff I don't have a clue about. But I've never let, as my dad said one time, um, he said, um, I notice, uh, he never did ever once call me son. I don't think he ever called me by my name either. But he did call me, and I knew when he was speaking to me. I'm talking about my earthly dad. My father, he calls me son. He calls me his servant. He says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well, I would rather have my heavenly father call me anything than call me nothing or never call me. Okay, so I have a choice of mm, internet information. Hey, I don't even know how to turn on Google. Well, perhaps I do, but I don't know. I'm just, I, I don't even know where the apostrophe is. So when I write don't, I write D-O-N-T. Or I try to use more ink. It's not ink. It's something. I don't know what it is. And say do not. Well, do not be remiss in planning your eternal home. So I'm 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 just gonna stick with my old King James Bible. Well apparently it's the wrong type of Bible. It's a Jimmy Swaggart Bible. He was a, an evangelist back in the seventies. I bought the blessed thing from him. Hope he made enough profit on it. I sure have made use of it. Then I stupidly gave it to a kid who had stolen a Gideon's Bible out of a motel room. I thought, well, there's nothing left of my Bible except all the words. The cover had long since fallen off. I, I like to carry it on the dash of my truck, as evidenced by uh, 12th and McKnight. Oh, dear. boy, I tell you, hot, hot something, I better not say that. A young man jumped in my truck, slapped my Bible. It's my Bible, it's just a book. It has a bunch of words in it that are purported to be from the Creator. I, I choose to believe it is. Okay, let's um, cut to the chase and say, listen, hmm. when someone speaks to me and they unload the, the thought processes of their mind processes, perhaps, and they delineate with a clarity that is unbelievable as to my limited worth, what happens? Kind of have to get over it. I always ask myself, <clears throat> well, once I ask myself, <clears throat> not quite often, why would a person say such a thing? And then you, you think about it, I think about it, because I occasionally think, process thought. And I said, well, they're just saying what's on their heart. Heart. Not hurt, heart, hurt heart. They're they're saying what they well they're delineating your worthlessness. 
compared to their intellectual prowess. So I always like to read between the lines. It's not a bad thing. You listen. Hey, next time you're having a serious conversation or you're, you're watching something somewhere, go on television, news especially, and someone says something, read between the lines. Okay? Okay. What does the Bible uh, say to an old uh, rancher? The one they call, some call, oh, one woman called me this. She said, you must be Cowboy Jim. And I thought, I'm no cowboy woman. And I looked at her and I thought, lady, you can call me anything you want. Just don't, don't, don't forget to call me. She has forgotten to call me. Oh, well, can't win them all. Doesn't stop you from hoping and trying. So my nutritionist, who doesn't talk to me, gave me some good counsel. She said, um, I'll paraphrase, don't let fear rule your life. So I will take that counsel and I will extend it to you from the most beautiful woman I ever met in my entire life. A nutritionist, smart lady. Well, and I will say, don't fear. Shoot, I've, I've spoken for seven minutes. I haven't said a thing. Of course, I can take 22 minutes just to say good morning, and that's before I have my first coffee. What is the mark of the beast? Oh, we're going to have part four or five of this. It's a mark that is placed upon your body, uh, hand, arm, forehead, uh, that is computer, oh, it's so funny, isn't it? Uh, the book was written, the Bible was written thousands of years ago, validated by, I might say, by the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, found in 1948, which concurred uh, almost to a fault uh, with um, what is happening today. And, and if you compared the Dead Sea Scrolls with the Bible that's existent, in existence today, you would find there really were no differences, which is really a stretch because something that had been placed in the ground uh, two, three thousand, thirty-five hundred years before, in part, at least two thousand. Let's say, let's say two thousand. Okay, and um, and it's fundamentally identical. Well, then you might just say, whoa. Perhaps there is value here. Why else would it have been able to maintain a clarity and a consistency with 2,000 years in between, unless it had uh, some higher uh, motivating uh, influence upon it? Okay. So, if you do not take the mark of the beast, you will not be able to eat, uh, buy fuel, provide for your children, pay your bills. Uh, you'll be screwed. Um, but, if you do take the mark of the beast, you will be able to do all those things. But, you will also be screwed for eternity, because no one who willingly takes the mark of the beast can be a believer in God, yes, but more, because many people say, well, I really believe there is a God, I just don't know what he is, or who he is, or where he is, or what he's doing, good Lord, my phone's busy. 
And, um, but you will never be able to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm pretty sure this is right. I'll have to ask my brother-in-law. He's a bit smarter than I am by about mm, a country mile. But if you take the mark of the beast, it's a qualitative choice that you're choosing Antichrist, you're choosing governments of the world, uh, one world government, uh, one world monetary system, you're choosing Antichrist, and you're setting aside God. If you choose not to take the mark of the beast, you will be able if you so choose to accept that God's plan through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the Redeemer, Lord of Lords, soon coming King, Mark of the Beast, on your hand, arm, mm, who knows, forehead, you do not have a hope in hell of ever being at peace with God because you, by taking that mark of the beast, and it's a volitional choice, it's your choice. No one is going to trick you into taking it if you're attentive to God. Scripture. The Holy Spirit. God's Son, Jesus, the Messiah. If you don't take the mark of the beast, you're going to die. But in your death, there will be the potential for life. It's your choice. Hey, uh, some people may never have heard. How do you get to be at peace with God? You say this simple prayer. It comes from scripture. God, forgive me. I accept your son, Jesus, the Christ, as my Lord and Savior. I accept him. I believe in him. I believe in you, God. I give all my sins, oh, what a gift, to Jesus, who suffered, bled, and died on the cross. And he took those sins, even if he gave them to him today, and he's been gone for 2,000, 2,200 years. But He's not gone far. And he took my sins, your sins, if you so choose. And he took them as he was nailed to the cross. So too your sins, my sins. The sins I did yesterday, I've done yesterday. Today and tomorrow. It doesn't mean you can live like hell. Some of us do. It means that you should live like as though you have had a lot forgiven you. Because if you accept God's plan for your life, you have had a lot that is forgiven. I did uh, a wonderful little story. I had been chewing too many testosterone. And uh, it was called The Black-Haired Warrior Woman. I'm, I'm going to do a remake of that. I'm going to learn somehow, get someone to show me how to uh, edit. And I'm going to edit the testosterone out of that little story. Oh, and it needs to be edited, children. Whoa, ho, ho. Mm, yes. Oh, yes. And I'm going to put it back on my YouTube channel. Uh, and... Uh, so, you're going to live till you die. You're the only one that can determine where you're going to spend eternity. Here on earth, Mark of the Beast, waiting for Jesus Christ to come back and kick someone's proverbial earth. That's what he's going to do. Or you can forego the Mark of the Beast and probably die. And uh, be at peace with God by saying, God, forgive me. Help me to be what you want me to be. I'm really sorry. And mean it. Okay, God bless. Say, hey, hot damn. Whoa. This is going to be part three. Not this one. The next one. God bless. God bless. Say.
Hey. God bless.